My topic is Scarlet Fatayman Hacking Methodology and Attack Surface Scenarios. So it's IVI or In Vehicle Infotainment uh, or ICE also, In Car Entertainment. So my name is Jay. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. Uh, I work as an application security engineer at Bugcrowd. Uh, shout out to my colleagues also. Uh, I work as a, I, that's my day job, but my, in the Philippines, we organize RootCon, which is the hacker conference in the Philippines. Uh, we also, uh, that also contributed some tools. I love playing games. I'm not the creator of Torla Malware, despite my family name. I, because I, I'm not, I'm not even Russian, so, you know. Yeah, so, I love to party. Who, who doesn't, right, in DEF CON? Yeah, so, yeah, before anything else, uh, we need an inspirational quote or whatever uh, you think about it. It's not about the ride, so it's the writer, so, yeah. So here's our scope and limitations so that you won't be disappointed with what this topic is all about. So first of all, IVI or in vehicle infotainment, infotainment systems, what you call a shortcut, uh, it's what you have in your dashboard for modern cars wherein there's, it's anything that you can play with your uh, videos, also music, uh, you don't need to touch your phone, you can connect to your phone with it, and then uh, call using that, so something like that. So it's purely infotainment bugs and its attack services. So what are the common uh, vulnerabilities for uh, infotainment? There's no canvas, ha uh, canvas hacking, sorry for that one. But if you want to learn that, there's also Car Hacking Village. Uh, yeah, methodology, security bugs, but not full takeover of the car because sometimes uh, infotainments have uh, limitation. In some, uh, there are <clears throat> some vehicles wherein you can control the steering wheel, but uh, in some cases it's in a separate module, so it's on a sandbox, it's different. In fact, there are also IVI, which, is, which are third-party add-ons for your car. So it's very inspired with what Jason Haddix uh, wrote in his GitHub and presented at DEF CON. <clears throat> it's the bug hunters methodology, but in my case, it's how to find bugs in an IVI. So I'm gonna probably miss out some attack services. So if you know anything, let's talk, or maybe you can share it to the audience. You know? So, yeah, for the car hacking handbook by Craig Smith, uh, these are the common attack surfaces that you have in your car, okay? Those are the most common, the things that you can uh, do to exploit your car. I mean, some of these entry points, you can use it to maybe take over the car or play some videos on it or uh, crash the system, something like that, or install malicious firmware on the, on the IVI. But in this talk, these are the attack services that we have. We have the Bluetooth, we have the Wi-Fi, uh, USB ports, because uh, you know, that's where you charge your phone or you play uh, your music sometimes using a USB flash drive. So SD card ports for your, uh, to update the maps, of the GPS, or uh, load something, probably apps. So the CD room or the DVD room, so that's also where you play some videos or maybe music or your DEF CON uh, CD that you have to play that music. And we also have the touch screen, so it's not just, even though you have physical access to it, uh, it's also a, an attack surface. It's an entry point for hackers. 
So it allows you to control the console, of course. And there are things that you can do by just touching the touch screen of the dashboard. So audio, uh, audio jack, I don't have any proof of concept for this yet, but probably short out something for the, uh, for the IVI. And then we have the cellular, uh, cellular connection, the GP, uh, GPS, etc. So for the Bluetooth, they say that everything better, uh, everything's better with Bluetooth. Not really, so, but it's a good. So for cars, for IVI, it's coupled with Bluetooth vulnerabilities, okay? So like, I think two weeks ago, there's a new Bluetooth vulnerability. Uh, you can jam, so it, mo most of the IVI have Bluetooth, right? To connect your uh, phone to your car. Then play some music or call someone, or anything, JBS also. So, you can jam the Bluetooth to uh, render the owner of the car uh, not be able to play his songs, or Justin Bieber songs. Yeah. Yeah. So there's also code execution. You can you can uh, execute arbitrary commands on the car on, a, on an IVI. So for Bluetooth, but I haven't seen a PLC for this yet. Maybe it will come out uh, with other hackers in the car hacking village. And of course, the default pairing numbers for Bluetooth. We have the zero zero one 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 two three four or whatever. So that's, that, those are the things that you can do, right? Pairing numbers. Or malform or format string vulnerabilities. Uh, with this kind of uh, format, you can actually brick the system or crash the system or probably take, it, uh, take you to, a, uh, to the desktop mode of the IVI. For example, if it runs on Windows ME or Windows, whatever it runs. So it could take you to a desktop because for example, if it's a sandbox app only. So there's also memory corruption. Uh, send malform packages to the head unit. So you can uh, crash also the uh, Bluetooth stack. So this one, so yeah. You can actually uh, send, uh, you have format string specifiers in a device name. You can rename your phone with, with this uh, percentage sign, it, it's a format string. So, yeah. A CV 2017-9212 was uh, assigned to a BMW 330i 2011 car. Uh, the researcher was from IO Active. So, like I said, test at your own risk. So, what if it takes you, like I said, it, what if it takes you to the desktop environment or debug options options of your IVI? So, this guy, he tweeted it in Twitter. Uh, so, basically, set your smartphone's name to percentage X, percentage H, or percentage C, percentage anything, format string, in uh, connected devices. So here's a 2011 BM, uh, BMW 330i. So what it did is that he was able to crash his car and yeah, break his system. Yeah. So yeah, you have badges, right? You can go to the people who are having their cars there right now to connect it to Bluetooth. And yeah, if you don't know some, uh, you, can, you can go to the sec list, which it, it, it is a GitHub repo where you can get some uh, payloads or you, know, you can fuzz, you can rename your phone, address book, or the song, the song of your uh, MP3, so something like that. You just need to go to this uh, repo. So fuzzing for format string vulnerabilities or strings. 
This is by Jason Haddix and Daniel Missler. Okay, Wi-Fi. So after Bluetooth, we have Wi-Fi. When Wi-Fi is down and all you have is imagination. So if there's Wi-Fi, of course, common Wi-Fi vulnerabilities, right? So you have, you can be off the, uh, the device so that he can uh, he will be able to connect to his uh, to the to the uh, Wi-Fi for example if there are some IVI wherein it allows you to connect to your Wi-Fi and you know what happens there after you will be uh, you will have an IP address and this is uh, you can do something with it and we'll talk about that later so there is also a way for you to update your car wherein um, there, it's in the one of the settings update your firmware right so if it's connected to your own network and you press the update so why don't you try to uh, sniff the packet and check the firmware uh, where the firmware came from and you know you can also uh, change the firmware if it doesn't have firmware signature validation. So you can uh, reverse the firmware, then maybe send a, a backdoor firmware to someone's car. So you can also connect to the Wi-Fi, fetch the IP address, then, so if it's in your network now, what are you going to do? You just need to scan your network, or if you own the network, right, you can see it in the router, the host name. So just scan the port of the IP address that you have, and then what services does it have? What services does your car have for the IVI? Does it have FTP? Does it have Telnet? Does it have SSH? Okay. So we have, if it does have Telnet, and the car, uh, the car, uh, the guy that owns the car is also a hacker or maybe a techy person, but you know he wasn't able, uh, he wasn't uh, he tried to log in his credentials so you can actually sniff the uh, credentials because it's insecure. Tell an FTP, for example. So some of these interfaces have no authentication. Okay. They don't have authentication, some have authentication, but have weak passwords. So yeah, Netcat is your friend. So exploit, there, uh, if there are other services, try to check if it runs on older services. So pretty much like the penetration testing uh, methodology that you have, that you learn. So this is from my car. So if it has a weak, weak password, so Try brute forcing the credentials, right? For example, there's SSH. Okay, try to brute force the credentials. Or if you know the, the default password, you can try it. So get to know the default password of the system. Uh, this is from a Mazda 2, 2017. And yeah, it, it has a SSH open and that's a default password. So there's a video on it just to prove that I'm not, uh, there is so it's not complete it's just like it's just the shell yeah so i'm kind of slow in typing because i was holding my camera yeah present linux cmu and yep didn't continue from there just to let you know that there are uh things under the jci so this was reported so if there's people from Mass that don't sue me anymore. Yeah. This is reported already. Uh, I value responsible disclosure, so. Yeah. Right, so another case, uh, Dan Cooper and Ted Gis Alchemy from Computex gained access to the IVI's root account for Volkswagen and Audi. So th this is the link to their report. Uh, they didn't give enough uh, details or POC for the attack, but they have an exploit. So by just knowing the IP address, connect connected to the same network, they have their, their own exploit, SH. Uh, so as you can see, he was able to 
uh, execute uh, uname space minus a, and it's running on QNX. And look at uh, the board, it's an NVIDIA Tigra 2 boards arm. Yeah. And yeah, there's also uh, this one from, from one of their reports also. So Telnet and there's the default password. So yeah, if you, if, if you also have access to the network, you can also sniff the credentials because it's Telnet, right? It's from Audi, okay? Who owns Audi here? Yeah. Throw, uh, don't throw away, but you know, just keep the hackers from, uh, just keep away from hackers right now. <laughs> okay, so key takeaways from Charlie Miller, you know, uh, they look at 2015 vehicles. This is a big difference between car hacking and say browser hacking. So 2015 is still a new, uh, is an old browser. Uh, but 2015 vehicle is still a pretty new car. In fact, if you own a Mustang 2015, that's still a pretty new car, right? Or if, or if you own like 2010 something and it's a very high-end car or like, for example, maybe Mercedes Benz. So it's still a pretty new car. And for browser, that's very old. I mean, some of the XSS, for example, for XSS attack in the web, so if, if it's already that kind of browser, so some XSS payloads won't work already, right? So this is another one from Ian Tabor. So he also showed an analysis of the IVI system within the 2015 DS5-1955 limited edition. So he was able to connect the device uh, to the device over TCP port 23, it's still Telnet. So the problem with this one, it doesn't have any authentication, right? So just maybe use a, a Netcat or Telnet, and yeah, here you go. You can already access the uh, IVI. So the things that you can do there, call logs, data leakage, those are the things that you can do. Uh, what have uh, what has been what the driver has been doing like where did he go because of the JPS navigation and also uh, some call logs that they have pretty much like that so yeah even though it's already 2015 so some manufacturers have this kind of issues so next we have the USB port or the universal serial bus. Okay, so things that you can do, you have the, you can install malicious apps or apps with it. Um, you can update the firmware via the USB, and um, you can do, sorry, you can do RCE or remote code execution if, uh, if it's vulnerable. So, killer USB. Have you heard of this USB? So if you plug it to your computer, it like destroys your computer. So maybe if you do, if you plug it, it's possible that you could uh, crash or maybe like um, erase the data on your IVI. So in most, in some cases, if, you don't, if your IVI doesn't have Wi-Fi, but it has a USB port, so you can, you can buy a USB to Ethernet adapters. So it's another way for your car to have an IP address if, if the Wi-Fi is locked down. So in my case, this is what I did. So owners of Mazda have been modding and installing apps to their infotainment system using the Mazda uh, all-in-one. So it's all-in-one tweak tweaks it's in the master 3 revolution so i tried to check out what's with the app and um, tried to look at how it's done so putting it all together from the documentation can you hear can you still hear me okay putting it all together in the documentation uh 
there's a documentation that allows you to update the CMU of the car. So I tried to read it, and there's actually a website for it. And you just need to put what you can download from that website to a USB flash drive, and you can already uh, retrieve the CMU details. So in one of the uh, in one of the files of that uh, zip file that you downloaded from their website, there's actually a, a text file like this. So CMD, as what you can see in the last last uh, line, on, uh, a number, the, uh, it actually executes some. Uh, it actually is executing a shell script. So yeah, I've put it all together to prove that this is what a, a valet parking can do to you. Like, hey, can you park my car? And then the attacker has a USB and it. And yeah, that's what I did. So that's the PLC. So I created a PLC on the SH file. So that's, this is one of the uh, snippets from the shell script. So that's what I did. I executed the uh, uname A, and th there's actually a video of this one. So I apologize for the chicken and the video. Uh, yeah, th 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 this is the one that I did, so you can see the files. Yep, so that, as what you can see, there's a USB flash drive. So I was playing music. So let's just try to fast forward. Uh, here. There. So I did, uh, from the shell script, you have the echo command. So yeah, I was able to execute the uh, uname space minus a. And, yeah, it's shown in the screen. So those are one of the dangers, you know. So aside from uh, you can install apps, you can actually execute some arbitrary commands for your car. So yeah. So yeah, that's the code again. So from the update file that you can just have on your flash drive. So this is the, uh, let's go back. This is one of the text file, on the text file of the update. This executes the uh, info.sh, and this is the, uh, what's inside the info.sh or shell script. So. It, I'm calling one of the uh, JCI tools that allows you to show to your screen. And yeah, that's it. Just to prove that there's RCE. So, also another case, uh, researchers from Keen Security Lab also found local code execution uh, via the USB through an update. Uh, they were not able to show a PLC for this one, maybe because of like <clears throat> they don't allow full disclosure, but just a, f uh, a, PLC, a PLC that, or a, an evidence of the attack that they did. There's no PLC, so yeah. So st still the same thing with an SD card slot. Uh, basically, you load the same thing. So if there's an update for your car, or you can update the firmware via the CD room or the DVD room, then you can load something, right? So for Mazda, using this uh, known CMU bug, you can actually deploy apps through the uh, custom Mazda application SDK. So yeah, you can, you can create your own apps with this one. It's free. And yeah, it's, you can just uh, test test it. 
And like I said, there's also touchscreen as one of the uh, attack surface. So you just need to connect to Wi-Fi to establish IP address. So that's for another attack, which is the Wi-Fi attack. But for this one, if you just press anything, you try to rape the buttons of your car, uh, you can actually cause an overflow with that one. So picture below from my uncle, uh, this is what he got. And yeah, it's uh, the, uh, the dialog box. So it's familiar, right? Yeah, so when you try to close that one, what happens is that it takes you to the Windows desktop environment and you can actually run CMD from there. Yeah, so one of my friends from RootCon also, uh, he has a third party to his Honda car. Uh, he also, he was not doing anything, but the application just, just crashed. And it also, uh, it also took him to the Windows desktop environment and there's a start menu, uh, locate CMD and yeah, do something like that. No POC because during that time, we were not yet interested with cars uh, security during that time. So sorry, no POC for this one, but yeah, it happens. So, have you seen this YouTube video? Video, so how to mod your Porsche 911 or other car to run Doom in three easy steps. So is this true? Uh, nope, it's just a joke. So he has a lot of videos. Don't. So what what he did is that he just insert a a Doom, then the Doom play on his Porsche. But it's not true because he also has a funny video or a prank video wherein he was able to run Doom on his toaster. That's the toaster there from the He did a lot of prank videos and other uh, other security guys thought that it, it was true, but it's not. So, yeah. For GSM, cellular connection, phone app, uh, do you have an app that connects to your car? So it's time for some mobile testing for this one. So you, you're gonna try to uh, intercept the request or you can use Burp to test the app and see how it goes from there. So there is one finding um, from this one wherein you can test the URLs you intercepted while testing the app. And Troy Hunt, he wrote a, uh, a POC, I uh, know, I mean an article about this, but he didn't specify the correct, uh, the exact URL. So what it does is that from the mobile app, there's an API that allows you to control the steering wheels. And he was able to, inter uh, to intercept that one. And if you know the VIN number of a certain car from Nissan Leaf, you can actually control the steering wheels of another car, okay? It's Nissan Leaf. So you can eavesdrop on, uh, eavesdrop on the connections. So if, uh, if you have a mobile app to your car, uh, you can reverse engineer the app. And if you re -engineer, uh, reverse engineer the app or like view the options there at the source code, uh, you can get the maybe you can get the API key. So I don't have PLC for this one, but I was able to look into one of this one for to destroy someone. Yeah. So, like I said, because I uh, I promote uh, I work in a company that does responsible disclosure, so that's why I don't have PLC for the other uh, app to your phone, but. Here, here, here are some of the programs where you can report some issues if you find bugs to your car. So yeah, earn money uh, on some of the uh, cars that you have there. So you have the FCA, so bugcrowd.com, and you have Tesla Motors, and also General Motors, JM from HackerOne. So yeah, so yeah, it's not just XSS for uh, reporting bugs. So I already did a demo on the car. So yeah, that's from CSI, whatever. 
CSI, whatever. Oh yeah, it's uh, NCS. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So here are my references to the talk that I have. So thank you, Google, for the memes, uh, for some of the uh, researchers that has uh, POC for the car. So as what you can see, it's really risky. Uh, final thoughts on this one is that maybe limit the connectivity and don't just leave your car alone to the, to the one who parks your car. Yeah. Maybe there's a vulnerability that allows you to update the firmware and, you know, steal some of the data in your, in your car. Uh, those are my references. And that's it. Just a short talk, but, you know, if you have any questions, let me know.